Um, we did an interview with Blue Boy. Yeah. You Shout know about him? Blue Boy. Yeah, yeah. He was, you talk about that Crip shit, like he, he yo, <laughs> became yeah. a Crip because there was all blood. Right. He was a, yo, bro, Crip, uh, he, his name is like, you know, he, he definitely, he's definitely a factor inside New York State Prison. He killed three people. Yeah. Like, two, two on the inside, one on the outside. Yeah. And he actually came home. What he told me that was very interesting is that like, Killing someone in prison doesn't have the same penalty as killing someone on the outside. Right. And you got to remember, we're in, uh, we're in upstate. We, this is not Rikers Island. Uh, this is upstate. They don't, they don't really care about human life up there like that. Really? So, so killing someone in prison is a much different penalty than killing someone on the outside? Listen, I can name you 10, 10 people off my hand that killed, a, uh, killed another prisoner in, in jail and never got no more than maybe 12 years. People, you'll kill a, an inmate and get out in five or 10 years. Right. You kill someone on the outside, you'll get life. Uh -huh. Is that a real thing? Yeah, I mean, clearly, you know, he came out, you know what I'm saying? He killed two people, but different strokes with different folks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not always that case because my bro, Eddie Ed, knock him dead Ed, he, he knows they all ran together with Blue Boy and shit, free him. Um, he got a he got one of those cases too, and he's still in there. So, you know, it's just it's the luck of the draw. Sometimes you sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's not. Yeah. And and, and different prisons have different uh like like judicial like uh, whatever, right? Right? It's like one county might go hard on it, and another county might not. You know what I'm saying? So it just really depends on where you catch the, the like, what prison you catch it in. Yeah, I remember at the end of the interview, I talked about uh, how he's adjusting because he was locked up for like 30 years or right. something, some huge amount of time, and uh, he's saying how like. You know, just the other day, he was walking out of like, you know, the bodega and some dude like shoved him and he was like, yo, man, excuse me. He's like, man, fuck out of here. And it's like, in prison, you can't let that go. Right. But on the outside, you have to let that go. Right. Because you're going to end up right back in prison again. Right. But like, it, it was interesting hearing him sort of struggle with like, ah, like I've been this way my whole life and I have to, you know, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a killer. I, I, he stabbed like, you know, whatever, 30, 40 people, like, but yet he has to come out and now he has to be passive and now he has to not get into it with people because yeah. he'll violate his parole and he'll go right back in. Right, yeah. Um, and, and what's interesting is that he doesn't look, he's not like a big strong muscular he's actually you know got a yeah he's a little overweight and whatever else if you look at him you know you take the the rags away and everything else now you look at him he just looks like you know a middle-aged spanish dude yeah boy he didn't always look like that oh he was more like ripped up before i'm saying i mean he did 30 years in the can well like you know did you look like this when you was 25 actually i did yeah just like that <laughs> I, I, i'm pretty much the same weight as i was at 25 uh, well yeah you know I mean, what i mean that's just me though but he was also in solitary for I think like like ten years. Or yeah, no, nah, he like did that. a lot of solitary every time. Yeah, I saw that interview. You know what I'm saying? I saw a good piece of it. Like you know, I actually like you know, I I, I said a prayer for him. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like not like I ain't get on my knees and pray, but I did like send some type of energy because I hope he can like you know stay out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I hope he can. He been through a lot, you know. So uh, you know, I, I do hope that he he can find that he can actually do that. It's, it's not easy, you know what I'm saying? Especially somebody like him, you know? So, uh, yeah, shout out to him, man. And shout out to you for giving him that that interview and shit. You know, I hope everything works out for that, bro. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, in the interview, at one point he started to cry. Right. He talked about how his son ended up in prison. I right. Think, I think with him at yeah. one point. And like blue. his dad was was in prison when he was a kid. And it was just like it's a cycle. You, you could tell, like it was just like like the totality of it was fucking him up. It was like, right. damn, like we just keep three generations of just this repeating shit. this shit over and fucking over again. No one could break it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm I'm sure you see that shit all the time in prison. 
you know, like fathers and sons and hell yeah. grandfathers hell yeah. and, and everything else like that. Yeah, hell yeah. See that, you know. It's fucked up, but, you know, we got to do what we can do to break that cycle, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because if 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 we don't do it, then we're going to pass it on to the next, you know what I mean? We're already going to just handicap them, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, it's important to take that initiative and try to break that cycle, you know what I'm saying? 